It's weird to say that I upgraded from the C200 to the C70 because yes, even though the C70 is newer than the C200, they're almost identical to each other. You've got similar specs, you've got kind of the same hardware and almost identical features, but at the same time, they're two completely different cameras. So if you're still trying to figure out which one to get, here are a few reasons why I upgraded to the C70. Number one, 180 frames per second slow motion. With the pandemic last year in 2020, I know all of us videographers tried to get ourselves into product videography. We were all stuck at home and there's nothing else to do but product videos at the time. And I know that we all watched Daniel Schiffer, Austin Paul, Joey Pomeroos, and all these other great content creators who were doing these amazing product videos for clients. And the one thing that all of these product videos have in common is their great use of slow motion. In the C200, you have slow motion up to 120 frames per second in 1080p, which is okay, you know, it's not bad, but there were some shots that we found when we were playing them back that didn't really quite look that good in 120 frames. Now, even though the C70's 180 frames per second is cropped in at 1080p, you still get slower footage than you can with the C200. And that looks a lot better when we're creating product videos for clients, which I'm still doing currently. I'm not too overly concerned with the 1080p footage because most of my clients don't even need 4K footage right now. Number two, size and weight. The C200 is a taller, bigger, chunkier boy that's more in line with Canon's other cinema cameras, while the C70 is a lot more like the 1DX styled camera. I don't really mind either style, but what I do like is that the C70 comes in a smaller and lighter package. I shoot a lot of stuff on gimbals, hotel commercials, lifestyle videos, weddings, branded content. I probably use gimbals about 70 to 80% of all of my shoots. So even though the C70 is about 0.7 pounds lighter than the C200, for me, it makes a big difference when I'm operating it on a gimbal. Not only that, but if I wanted to use the C200 on a gimbal, I would have to use something heavier and bigger like the Zhiyun Crane 3S because you can't properly balance it on smaller gimbals. And since the Crane 3S is already a really heavy gimbal and then add on top of that the C200 with a prime lens or a zoom lens, you're looking at about 15 pounds of weight that you have to constantly be carrying and moving around as you're shooting, which is pretty heavy to operate all day long, especially if you don't have an easy rig or something else to offset the weight. But with the C70 smaller and shorter body, you're able to balance it properly on something smaller like the Crane 2S. It's still somewhat of a heavy combo, but I'm able to operate it much longer than I could with the C200. Number three, C-Log2 with 10-bit recording. C-Log2 is currently Canon's best log profile in terms of preserving and capturing dynamic range. And on the C200, it does offer a C-Log2, but you're only able to access it through raw recording. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't ever need to shoot raw for what I'm doing. And I think I've only shot raw once throughout the entire time that I've owned the C200. What's worse is that you only get 16 minutes of recording time on a 256 gigabyte CFast 2.0 card, which are, if you know what they are, they're super duper expensive and uh, you can't really shoot for that long on them. And because of that, I only shoot C-Log3 on the C200 because they can record onto regular, less expensive SD cards. The other weird limitation on the C200 was that it could only record either 8-bit normal recording or 12-bit RAW. There is no in-between 10-bit recording, and I know that was a really big pain point for a lot of C200 owners. Not to say that the 8-bit footage on the C200 was bad because I really got some amazing footage from it, but the C70, you're able to record 10-bit C-Log2, which means I'm still able to get really amazing dynamic range thanks to C-Log2 and still be able to push and pull the footage in color grading. Number four, new sensor for low light shooting. The new dual gain output sensor on the C70 is the same one that's found on Canon's C300 Mark III. Basically, it's capturing two sets of information, one in the highlights and one in the shadows. This essentially gives you better colors and saturation in the brighter areas of the image while having less noise in the darker parts. It's not going to be Sony A7S level of clean, but it's going to be a lot less noisy than the C200. And because of this new sensor and the fact that I can shoot C-Log2 over C-Log3, it means that I can get better footage and more dynamic range on the C70 without having to go through the burden of shooting raw. Number five, Canon's 0.71X RF to EF focal reducer. If you don't know what a focal reducer is, it's basically an adapter that has glass elements inside it that acts as a reverse magnifying glass that concentrates more light onto the sensor. This gives you an extra stop of light on the lens and it also reduces the crop factor on the C70, which makes it basically a full frame camera. And for a long time, Metabones was the go-to manufacturer for all types of camera brands to get these speed boosters or focal reducers. But now Canon has 
made one themselves for the C70. This adapter lets you use your EF lenses on the C70's RF mount without any issues, which is great because I'm not gonna be investing into RF lenses right now since they're super, super expensive. And obviously the C200's EF mount would not be able to accept this new adapter. And while I do really enjoy the look of a Super 35 sensor on the C200, the full frame on the EOS R is just a different vibe. Especially for situations where I do want that 16mm wide shot of landscapes, the ceremony setup on weddings, and also smaller interior spaces. I don't have the adapter currently, but I will be getting one in the near future to fully take advantage of the C70's flexibility. Those are my reasons why I chose to get the C70, and to some people, the differences between these two cameras are so small that it doesn't really make sense for them to switch over. But I do want to know whether you would get the C200 or the C70 for what you're shooting currently. Leave a comment down below and let me know. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. It really does help small creators like me grow. Until the next one, my name is Alex Chung and I'll see you later. Bye.